welcome to another installment of Awesome Comics. I am your host this week, Trevor Mueller. Uh, well, happy Halloween, and uh, welcome to the show. Today we are all dressed up as other characters, so when we do our introductions, we will uh, introduce ourselves as well as who we are dressed up as. Uh, but before we get started, I want to remind you guys to like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash awesomecomicsshow, as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, with that said, um, again, I'm Trevor Mueller for this week, and today we're talking about the Adam West, Burt Ward, Batman, also known as Batman 66. I am dressed up as Lex Luthor from the Batman v Superman movie. I don't have any Jolly Ranchers, but Sherry. Mmm. Mmm. Sherry. <laughs> so on this side of the table, we have the people here that think that Batman 66 does not suck. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I... I'm Liz Lemon, <laughs> and this is one of my best friends. Leslie Nope! Vote Nope, 2012. <laughs> also, Hillary, 2016. Excellent. And on this side, we've got the opposing side, who think that Batman 66 is no good. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Uh, I'm Norman Bates. I'm Lil Mac. Lil Mac doesn't really talk, so I'm just going to stare at you real quick. He talks right? with his fists. <laughs> Excellent. So today we are going to be talking about uh, one of the first Batman shows that I ever watched when I was growing up, long before the Tim Burton movies came out, long before Batman the Animated Series, but we obviously have two very different opposing viewpoints here, and we're going to break it down into three categories. The first one that we are going to talk about, guys, is the cast of Batman 66, right? You can talk about the actors, you can talk about the rogues gallery, whatever it is. We'll go ahead and start on the opposing side here and say, guys, why does the cast suck? Okay, I'll, I'll start if you, if you don't mind. Go this. for it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Adam West, look, I, I like Adam West. I respect him. Uh, I think it's adorable. I think it's so cute that he thinks he's still Batman. That's just adorable <laughs> off, off the charts. But uh, he comes out swinging. I Punches do. Through. Boom, suckers. Um, but the show was meant to make fun of Batman. That was the whole point of the show. It was like the the producer William Dozier never watched uh, or never read any comic books before, and he looked at the Batman comic and was like, "But there's no way we can do this unless we make it really campy and stupid." And that's what happened. So Adam West is the poster child for this show, obviously, because he's Bruce Wayne Batman. He sort of epitomizes everything that's also kind of bad about it. Like I said before, I like him. I love him in the Fairly Odd Parents as Catman and all that stuff. Hilarious. I, I really like Adam West as a guy, just as Batman. When people say he's my Batman, I'm like, well, you are wrong. Absolutely <gasps> wrong. Um, so Whoa. Anyone else Why? you want to point out? Um, just like all these tropes we had about uh, the Batman... And Robin, <clears throat> the Batman and Robin, like uh, their auto or their you know homoerotic subtext and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't think I, we're going there. I'm just saying, what do you <laughs> to the bed poles, old not, chum, for a quickie before we change into our suits? I'm that is talking, not my. That's you. That's <laughs> not me. Like that's how, all there's you. always been that that like They're you know team divided. <laughs> there's always been that like you know stigma around those two but then this show with they're so campy and they're so just weird together that it just i think that the show really furthered that thought it's so much so that it's been people have thought about it for years and decades into regular comics about whether or not what type of relationship they have and it was such a big thing i, I just i, I mean, feel like this <laughs> this totally move that forward in a it's, very negative way and it's just like right i mean people do make comparisons to that that's not my exact point on it but i mean i mean i'll back you up because we're on the same team i uh, just think it <laughs> <laughs> Bert ward i mean you know as robin i mean he was, he was pretty young when the show came out like it's not like oh he was a terrible actor he was what like 18 17 something like that when that show came out so i mean i'm not gonna like totally land blast him or anything like that um but holy bullshit batman our show sucks <laughs> i mean good lord I'm yeah, sorry. it's not good. Um, besides him, okay, Burgess Meredith as the Penguin. Can we talk a little bit about that? I love Burgess Meredith. Um, oh, yeah. Big Rocky fan. I don't know if you know this or not. Thank <laughs> God that Rocky came out because he's known as Mickey for the most part in pop culture because he was left to be known as Penguin. That would have totally been a disservice for him because Burgess Meredith was one of the greatest actors of his generation. He was a great character actor. If you want to see some great Burgess Meredith, go back and watch a couple Twilight Zone episodes because he was in about four of those and he was great in all those. He's a really good actor, and I think it's uh, unfortunate that people still kind of go, "Oh, yeah, Bruce Meredith." Wow, 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 wow. That's such a great name, though. It's like, you'll get your chance, ladies. You'll get your chance. That means it's iconic. 
mm-hmm. dumb. It's iconic, iconically dumb. <laughs> I was just and, is that talking through the gritted teeth? Right. Yeah. Um, Caesar uh, Caesar Romero uh, as the Joker. Is is a <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't have a problem with Caesar Romero as a Joker. It's one of the Joker's personalities. I get it. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's just kind of that's kind of the Joker. I get it. Frank Gorshin as as the Riddler. That's uh, he's he's so wacky weird... off the wall. He kind of reminds me of like a more of a Joker type character. Yeah. His laugh is kind of like yeah, the yeah. Joker very mm-hmm. much. And whatever transgressions he made in the show, it's all forgiven because he was in the Meteor Man movie. So <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good. I love you, Frank. I know he's wow. dead, but it's all right. I love you. He's up there. Right. Uh, anyone else you want to talk about from this? this uh, just like. <laughs> Hey, watch the hat. Watch the hat. Uh, are you okay? This is why we have popcorn. Uh, this is just a watch. Uh, like Catwoman, yeah, yeah. Catwoman being in there a lot. She's never really much of a character. She was there, you know, She's sexualization. Just sex appeal. It's yeah. the '60s. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. Oh, ladies, ladies, you will get your chance. You'll get saying, your like, chance. I mean, they never really uh, Batgirl. They never really fleshed out those characters. <laughs> Well, it's okay. It's okay, Leslie. <laughs> Keep it together. Keep it together. And I think they, you know, underutilized. They're just there as a, you know, hey, look, this is a pretty girl. All right. That was it. Okay. Okay. So opposing side, why is the cast good for wrong. Batman 66? Wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. You're wrong. Why you're wrong. You already said it yourself that the whole show was meant to be campy. So they matched their they matched their Always performances. It was very Listen, stupid. we let you talk. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> they matched their performances to the tone of the show, which shows their versatility as an actor or actress. Come bit. You get lines like, man, some days you don't know where to put a bomb. <laughs> Come Can't on. Get rid of a bomb. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He commits to the bit, right. okay? Of All course. of them commit, 100%. Yeah, they're getting paid. Of course. Not of course. Some people, oh, Jennifer Lawrence, don't commit. <laughs> so when yeah, she was on that show, she would have to saying, commit. Hold on, hold on, let the ladies go. I'm saying, they commit to the camp. Like, mm-hmm. You can't have something campy and, and like, off-the-wall colorful and bam-pow, like, super-duper psychedelic 60s and, like, not commit to it. Right. And everyone 100% is... Like the role that they're trying to encompass, like a uh, Batgirl, Yvonne Craig, when she's drowning in caviar. How does that even work? <laughs> that doesn't work. But she's she's just like in this vat of caviar. Like <laughs> I'm drowning, Batman. I'm drowning, and it's so silly, and you laugh, and it's still so fun to watch. Right. Campy does not mean stupid. Right. And like you were saying, it shows that they are great actors right. because they just commit to the role, commit to the direction. And don't question it and just Mm -hmm. do what needs to be done to make the whole theme and feel of the show come together. And like you even said, you've like half argued our point for us because you've already said how many great actors they have Mm -hmm. as a part of the cast. Let's talk about Cesar Romero here really quick. Oh man, those were the days when your Joker was just refusing to shave his mustache. Like, that was, like, the biggest thing that you had to deal with was someone being like, nah, this is what gets the ladies, so it's staying. You better kick on that clown makeup because it ain't going nowhere. And I, I read somewhere his watch that you can see is not, like, part of his costume. He wouldn't take off his he watch. He wouldn't take off his watch because... <laughs> Someone, Sounds like the a... president of Mexico or someone important, like, gave him this watch and it, like, did not come off his person <laughs> at all times. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, man, what a quaint little, like, actor that was like, no, nah, here's what I'm doing. <laughs> if well, only. He's really good with the part, uh-huh. too. You already said that. No, I, I think that <laughs> he's, you know? fine. he's fine. As and the joke. Penguin is a and great character actor. <laughs> I love the he Penguin the character. Slap, personally. Yes. I think... As, <laughs> as an actor, it's hard to, like, come out of nowhere with, like, this this role that's talked about for years and years and years, and he goes for it, and whether or not you find it annoying, you remember it. Mm-hmm. And he came up with an iconic laugh. Like, Heath Ledger's Joker now mm-hmm. has an iconic laugh. I think, to me, that is that penguin sound that I think of is his annoying Albeit annoying, laugh. Right. And I love it. And that sideways talking, he's one of the most <laughs> like characters from the show and the movie that you kind of remember. Mm-hmm. Um, like visually speaking, like costume wise yeah. and look wise, he's one of those that pops right to mind. Also, Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Julie yes. Newmar changed the way that Catwoman was portrayed in the comics. She originally was wasn't wearing like tight cat suits mm-hmm. or bodysuits or anything. Mm-hmm. And yes, super sexy, but 
like DC had shelved her as a character because they were like, nah, she's nothing but sex. We're not going to worry about her comic book wise. So if it wasn't for the shows in the movie, Catwoman probably wouldn't be a thing right now mm -hmm. because of her. Great, uh, great points made by both sides. We're going to move on to our second topic here. You can't talk about Batman without talking about the gadgets, right? <laughs> Batman's got a bat everything. And this show, I think, took that to the nth degree. Yep. So let's talk about you know the, the gadgets, the vehicles, uh, the computers in the Batcave. We'll start with the side, why it doesn't suck. Talk about Batman's gadgets in this show. Well, again, it fits the tone. It's meant to be campy. And what's more campy than having shark repellent spray. Yeah. Well, like, shark repellent bat spray. Right. Shark it has to have bat spray. in the name of it. <laughs> right. Which, I mean, at least if you're going to go with it, like call everything bat everything. Exactly. Fine. And I love some of the creativity put forth in some of them, though. Even like, I can't get, uh, every time they go down and there's the instant costume change <laughs> lever. I wrote that I down. I love the that. Instant, they like <laughs> switch and it will change them back or yep. just one of them, whatever you want, because love that's it. the technology that they have. Uh, we might as well address this. You <laughs> like, have to think you know. of the technology of the time too. Like if you watch old Star Trek, it's kind of the same way where mm -hmm. some things don't age well because mm -hmm. of the technology of the time and what was available and their fluctuating budget on the show. <laughs> Like, that was a big one, building UFOs. Sure, mm -hmm. Joker. You know, um, so it really has to do with the technology and where it was in time. But I think a lot of it, because they just committed to being campy and mm -hmm. committed to, like, having just really cool bat gadgets that were like, sure, he has this random thing. Absolutely. He's prepared for all situations. For all situations. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, of course he has like a like a pill in his like utility belt that's like, hey, no, if you do this, it's cool. I already took the pill. I already thought of it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think too, it's also one of the most iconic Batmobiles. Oh my you know, god. Yes. talk about the Batmobile for also, a second. Like it still looks awesome. The, the motorcycle awesome. Yes. Batgirl's motorcycle, yes. which I so need. Good. It's so cute. Yes. The, but yeah, all the all the uh all the bat vehicles. Yeah. But specifically that Batmobile. Right. The iconic. design is simple mm -hmm. yet still cool and very memorable. Mm -hmm. You still see lots of people who are able, who try to recreate that car just because it left that much of an impact on that the design of those that Batmobile or the that was the cycle what the motorcycle cycle? yeah that boat that <laughs> helicopter that <laughs> helicopter <laughs> yeah oh, so good awesome. terrible so yep terrible. awesome 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 but just iconic iconic vehicles mm -hmm. really really out there. Random gadgets, which some of them exist now. Not everyone had a computer in their homes or their bat caves back then. Now we kind of see a lot of this stuff as like, okay, well, we own all this, so it's just like the newest technology. Back then, these things didn't exist, and they like created it out of thin air. <laughs> so, Gentlemen, opposing arguments for the gadgets. Okay. <laughs> bat so, shield. The freaking bat shield. It's got, and it folds. No, Batman doesn't need a bat shield, okay? Why there's not? so many. Okay. <laughs> there's As if he's so... wearing spandex. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. okay. No. Okay. No. It's there's so many ridiculous gadgets that they just throw out there. That it's just like okay, we're getting away from Batman. We're just trying to throw in as much shit as possible to make it just campy. We're 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 they go away from Batman and they just throw all this stuff in there just to be ridiculous. Isn't this ridiculous? Yeah. Whoa, what a sticky situation. Yeah, I gotta use the most yeah. ri random ridiculous thing ever to get out of it. And it's just like they're not focusing on Batman. They're focusing on. What type of gadgets uh, he can have? How over the top it yeah. is, right? But you talk about how iconic all this stuff is. It's like, oh yeah, it's iconic, but only because it's been it's been freaking forever since this stuff happened, and people mm. still remember it. That doesn't mean it's good. It's iconic, but that doesn't right. mean it's it, just good. because something is memorable doesn't mean that it's good. And I think yeah, it might be memorable a for a, a bad reason. We're right. arguing how that it is memorable because it's good, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're but saying that it is good. Okay, it's, that's our argument. Yes, yes. it's iconic. <laughs> And good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's not. So uh, there's this thing called the truth control bat tester. Listen to this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's placed over the face of the individual being uh -huh. interrogated. Yeah. As the person answers questions, their breath is captured in the in a, the bag. The breath <laughs> is then mixed with a chemical liquid. Should the individual be telling the truth, the oxygen content will turn the liquid red. If they are lying, their increased metabolism means more oxygen, which will create an imbalance 
in the liquid and it will remain clear. How Boy, creative that's, is that? That is just so oh creative. My God, I mean, how, how much, how much you know, how much PCP those guys take to come up with something like that? Incredible. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's memorable and great. Um, yeah, right. yeah the, the gadgets are a big part of the show. I mean, obviously. And not just this show. I mean, Batman. Batman's had gadgets his entire career. He doesn't have superpowers. Career. He That's doesn't have superpowers. That's stuff. one of his main things is that he, but they're he has all these gadgets. But they're practical. If you read the comic, always for the most part. <laughs> I mean, getting around the city with with a rope with a little bat at the end of it right. is probably not the best way to get Although around I, the city. I do think that well, the, the grapple, the back grapple, whatever they call it, does kind of look cool in the show because it flips mm-hmm. out and you throw up. So there, it's not completely useless, but I mean, there's a lot of times it's so not like over the top. Yeah, that's anything though. I mean, I know, if right. you just shoot something up, you know, with any Look, Batman you thing, you saw the end of it, and you're like, that's not a touch yeah, exactly. to anything. <laughs> but I think I think we can all agree. And I think anyone at Channel Awesome can totally agree that the worst gadget for Batman was not from Batman '66. Oh, here we go. It was from Batman. Batman and Robin. Robin. <laughs> what are we talking Bat about? Credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Bat- credit card. That's right, sir. That's right. Oh my god. So at That's least great. Batman '66 didn't have the no. worst. No. Do we all agree? Do we yes, all agree? Agree. 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 agree? Although we can't, I can't argue that Batman '66 heavily influenced Batman and Robin, which was one of the worst things of all time. Also heavily so, like, oh influenced all Batman. <laughs> So no, really. No, all right, all right, no. all right. So we've tackled on the gadgets, right? Let's talk about our final topic here, right? Mm-hmm. Lasting mm-hmm. appeal. Is this the kind of thing that's going to be remembered for generations? Has it stood the test of time? Is this Batman, or is this a good introductory Batman for generations today? We'll start with the uh, the nose. Okay, does it stand the test of time? Absolutely not. That's, no, I think, the one thing that not. it doesn't do is no. stand the test of time. You could say it's goofy, campy, and I grew up with it, that's great. But if you show this to a kid right now, they're going to be like, where is, uh, you know, uh, Christian Bale? Yeah, or, what is, what kind of Batman, Batman, Batman is this? Exactly. Yeah. This isn't the Batman that I know. I mean, like, there are kid versions of Batman. They're out there. Batman the Brave and the Bold is a great like cartoon show that had sort of an influence from this. That's also campy. Yeah, it's a little campy, but they actually throw authentic character stuff in there. There's uh, an episode called uh, The Knights of Tomorrow, which is about Damian Wayne from from that show. Mm -hmm. Um, And they show like in the future what happens. And there's some really emotional moments in there. And they're not doing it just to say, oh, isn't this stupid? Like Batman 66 does. They actually throw some real tension and real character stuff in there. Actual real sexual tension on Batman 66. (laughs) I'm talking about character and dramatic tension, not bullcrap. Character development. You know, there was none of that in Batman 66. It was just (laughs) these characters were very one dimensional. They they just, I'm Batman. I fight crime. You know, I'm Batman. I fight crime. I'm Catwoman. I steal shit. I'm Penguin. I, you know. (laughs) <laughs> That's it. They're very I'm one dimensional. They're one dimensional, dimensional characters, and there's nothing to them. So mm-hmm. every you, you can jump in at any episode, and you just see Batman's gonna save the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, when the sh- show first started, it was supposed to be a more serious thing. I mean, if I can compare it, uh, if if I will, to uh, the George Reeves 1950 Superman show, The Adventures of Superman, that was a, like a goofy kind of campy show, but it still was trying to be something. Uh, inspiring the kids was true to the character. This isn't Batman, folks. No. Okay? No. This isn't Batman. No matter how much they want to try and make it look like the dark and gritty Batman with the different covers and stuff, with, oh, it's a red sky. This is this is the Batman you know. It's dark no, Batman. Absolutely not. It's not. Okay? And uh, I feel like the, they never showcase Batman's intelligence ever. Yeah, what? Like, yeah. It, he, he has all these random, really weird rationalizations and the way he gets to certain things. It's just like... Okay, I guess you can get there from that. I just, I, he never seemed very intelligent to me. He didn't seem like a detective. Mm-hmm. I, I never got the detective vibe. Yeah. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I completely disagree on that strong point. Mm-hmm. Yes, they go a goofy way about like some of the like C at the C, C for Catwoman. Well, yeah. Like, so yeah, smart. absolutely. Yeah, so some smart. of that You're is genius. just silly and ridiculous. Yes. But I disagree on the detective stuff. That's why he has his whole bat cave and the computers and like all these testing things is to like figure things out. So mm-hmm. I com- like wholeheartedly disagree on the standpoint that it doesn't show off Batman's intelligence. Mm-hmm. I think it completely does. And a lot of the times he'll even give Robin credit for figuring things out, mm-hmm. which is like awesome. Um, also speaking of Superman, Superman comics were doing so much better than Batman before the show and the movie. Yeah. And because yeah. of the show and the movie, sales of the comics skyrocketed. This is true. So mm-hmm. 
we may not have that now right. if it wasn't for this, honestly, because mm. they just, a lot of the characters weren't doing well in the comics, so they shelved them. A lot of the comics themselves just weren't doing well. But because of the show and this movie, we, we now have Batman. Um, also, I, re I rewatched the movie last night, which I haven't seen since I was really, really young. And so I agree that maybe for kids of this day, this is maybe... I don't know, because I'm not a kid. I can't really say maybe this isn't the best Batman to show them first. I think Batman the Animated Series one is probably more relatable for kids. And I think we can, for the most part, agree on that. But when I was a kid, yes, I thought some of the lines were ridiculous. And I was like, wait, how did he figure out that they were there? That was silly. <laughs> but I was watching the fight sequences in the movie where I like completely bl like blocked out of my brain that fight sequence where he's holding the cat for like a whole fight sequence on a boat and I was like, oh god, the cat, the cat, the cat, the cat, the cat, watch the cat, oh my god, the poor cat. Yeah. They're, they're so fun and ridiculous. There's, mm -hmm. in the show, the, the Dr. Cassandra um, episode um, with, where she's like with the arch villains and they all go invisible. I think they like take a pill or something, I don't mm -hmm. remember. But they're all invisible and the dynamic trio has to fight a bunch of invisible people and it's just a sound stage of them off camera being thrown at stuff and running around and like dodging stuff and just trying to like fight club it out with themselves. <laughs> I love the fight sequence I was on the yeah. show. They're so funny yeah. and so memorable and so fun. Just so fun to watch. And so as long-lasting for me of a show, I would say that has lasting appeal for me from, yeah. like, a nostalgia standpoint. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay, one of the great things about iconic characters like Batman is that you can have multiple interpretations. Yep. There is not, like, one end-all, be-all of Batman. I mean, I guess you could argue that, but... It's great to see different people's interpretations of these characters. And that's one of the great things about comics in general, is that you have these iconic characters and different people come in and have different interpretations and different viewpoints of these characters. So yes, this may not be dark, gritty, Christian Bale Batman, but this is a whole different Batman. You just have to recognize that you can't compare the two head on at all times. They're completely different tones and totally different interpretations of a same character. Someone so took it's fun. the idea of a man dressing up as a bat, fighting other people that play dress up and went, that's, that's odd. Yeah, that's <laughs> odd. Like, let's poke let's fun talk at that. about that. It's just yeah. supposed to be funny and fun. Like I watched it with my parents mm -hmm. who watched it when they were kids. And I still, this is, this is a teacher side note, I guess. I still, to this day, use some clips of the show to teach onomatopoeias when ah. I teach English because that's what it, that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. all the great onomatopoeias of like, pow, bam, bam whatever. <laughs> and my kids love it. They're like, Mom. what is this? This is hilarious. Mm -hmm. So like, as long as you don't use it, as long as you just prepare people for like, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's fun. Just enjoy it. Sure. People can. <laughs> you can enjoy both too. Yes, Because you I can. actually really like the dark gritty ones and I like this. Yes. Yeah. You can have both. You can. Well, great arguments on both sides, guys, with our last minute here. Uh, you know, let's, let's definitely tell people where they can find us online. And also leave us in a co uh, comment down below and let us know what do you think about Batman 66? Where can they find you guys online? Start here. All right, you can find me on Twitter and Facebook and here as always. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Heather Roos or Instagram at H Roos. Gentlemen? Find me on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter. Go ahead and follow me on there. Uh, Facebook.com slash awesome porter. And I also run a nice little quaint motel. You guys want to <laughs> visit me? Oh, yeah. You can come visit me Very in nice, Pawnee, right? Indiana you know, as well. It's good yep. stuff. <laughs> and I am Trevor Mueller. You can find me online, trevoramueller.com, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all Trevor A. Mueller. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and leave us comments down below. Thanks, guys.